Nowadays, the idea is often pushed that you have to choose between trusting God or trusting the science, but this couldn't be any further from the truth. If you've already seen our previous videos, then you already know that when popular treatment methods were failing during the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, Adventists' use of the Eight Laws of Health, which included hydrotherapy, played a crucial role in saving not just the lives of young Adventists, as was the case with South Lancaster Academy students, saving the lives of those in their community who had been ravaged by the Spanish flu. Now, I don't know about you, but I find the thought of my people being able to educate and help those who are sick in the middle of a pandemic extremely inspiring and invigorating and any other motivational words that begin with the letter I. Let me ask you a question. If hospitals were to keep getting filled to capacity like they are now, and someone that you know needed help to deal with COVID-19 because they couldn't get treatment, would you know what to do? Or what about the new variant of COVID-19 that people are discussing because they believe that it could possibly evade immunity? Would you still be able to fulfill Christ's commission to teach and to heal with natural remedies like they did in 1918? And would you be able to explain why hydrotherapy is not just some old hocus pocus snake oil treatment from the old days, but rather that it is a perfectly intelligent and scientifically proven method to assist the body in fighting and recovering from an infection? In Healthful Living, page 247, it says, Make use of the remedies that God has provided. Pure air, sunshine, and the intelligent use of water are beneficial agents in the restoration of health. And I hope you caught those words, intelligent use of water. Today, I want to show you that the use of natural remedies is not outdated, and I will try to do just that in episode three of Health Demic. I hope that you will see that the instructions given to us in the spirit of prophecy is still very much relevant today, and that science always supports what God has instructed his people to do. As usual, we posted the link to the video on our Valid Reason channel in the description below, in case you want to share it with people of other faiths or non-faiths. And you will also find a link to episode number four of Healthdemic that shows you step-by-step step how to treat someone or yourself with hydrotherapy should you get sick. Hope you're blessed by the videos and please remember to share. Most of us have seen it, and just like these people right here, we look on with shock and amazement as we think, these people are crazy. I'm of course talking about people who jump into ice cold water in the middle of winter in nothing but their swim trunks and go swimming. But these people are not actually the crazy ones. As a matter of fact, based on what I'm going to show you, I might be the crazy one for not doing something like this sooner. But before I tell you why, you need a little backstory. In this article from the Washington Post, it states that there is a catastrophic lack of hospital beds in the upper Midwest because of the increase of coronavirus cases. And this article highlights a study that half of low-income communities have no ICU beds. So what if you're from one of these areas in the Midwest or the inner city that doesn't have a bed for you? Since COVID-19 started, hospitals have never been so full, with many states reporting that all their beds are full. And most of us are not lucky enough to have a helicopter pick us up and take us to get treatment if we get infected with COVID. So if you or someone you love can't get treatment, what should you do at home? Should you just sort of wait around and hope things get better? In part one of this series, we highlighted the fact that during the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918, there was a group of people that had a 99% success rate in treating those that were infected with Spanish flu during a time when there were thousands dying every day. These successes were seen in Seventh-day Adventist institutions all around North America, one of which was the Hutchinson Adventist Seminary that had a 100% success rate treating the Spanish flu. So I would highly suggest that you hang in there with me so we can find out one of the main things that they were doing to have such great success. Now, Spanish flu and coronavirus are not exactly the same, but both of these outbreaks share many of the same symptoms, which might just mean 
that when it comes to treatments you can do at home, what was good for the Spanish flu goose could be good for the coronavirus gander. So, without further ado, here is what was being done by the medical professionals in Seventh-day Adventist institutions during the Spanish flu pandemic. Number one, rest and quiet. Number two, a carefully regulated diet. And number three, fomentations applied to the throat, chest, and abdomen. Now, I'm sure you know what rest and quiet are. And I'm sure we all have a general idea of what a carefully regulated diet is. And we'll dig deeper into that in an upcoming episode. But most of us have probably never heard of a fomentation. But this is one of the most important things to know if you or someone you love get sick and can't get access to medical treatment. So, this is the definition of what a fomentation is. It's the application of hot, moist substances to the body to ease pain. Well, that's not very helpful. How about this definition? The action of instigating or stirring up undesirable sentiment or actions. No, nothing? Still not getting you excited? Well, these two definitions tell us exactly what we need to know about fomentations. And this is what it looks like. Now I understand that all of this may look a little weird to us, but hang in there with me. There's a reason for the water, the blankets, and yes, even for the swim trunks. There is a method to this madness, and it's called hydrothermal therapy. And it's become a lost art in today's modern world. If you don't know, hydro means water. And as we mentioned in the previous episode, water is one of the eight laws of health. And thermal means heat. Put them together and you have hot water therapy. All they're doing is heating up the body for a few minutes and then shocking it with cold water. This therapy has been done in Scandinavia for hundreds of years. Just Google it for yourself. This is a thing and people are paying for these wonderful services. Studies have shown that people who practice this winter swimming have higher white blood cell counts, which means better immune systems to fight infections. And it's not some hocus pocus snake oil treatment. I am not making any of this up. Read it for yourself. There is scientific evidence that suggests that hot and cold treatments have an immediate effect on the body. And to quote, induce a leukocytosis and granulocytosis, an increase in natural killer cell count and activity, and a rise in circulating levels of interleukin-6. Now I know that's a mouthful, but basically, your immune system gets shocked into thinking that it needs to fight and musters up an army of white blood cells. So here's what they did at Hutchinson Seventh-day Adventist Seminary. As soon, and I mean as soon as students started feeling any type of symptoms, a cough, a sneeze, a runny nose, whatever, they immediately did hot and cold treatments to stimulate the white blood cells to fight the infection. And then immediately after the treatment, they wrapped up in a blanket to assist the body with a self-induced fever and went to sleep. This was repeated daily until the symptoms went away. The bottom line is, they were giving the body an immune system nudge before the symptoms got any worse. And that is the key. You have to catch it as early as possible to give your body the best chance to be successful. So how do you do it? If you check the description below, you will find a video that lists two ways that you can do hot and cold treatments. You don't have to take my word for it. Just try it for yourself but only after checking with your doctor first to see if it's safe for you. We hope that you learned something today that can give you a bit more certainty in these uncertain times. Remember that when it comes to your health, you are the first line of defense, and without being irresponsible, we should do our best to look after our own bodies. Hope to see you again. Take care and stay healthy.